Hi everyone, today on Rebecca's Random Adventures, I'm making a junk journal for the very first time. I got together lots of random bits of paper, which I'm going to show you, bound them together and added like a ribbon closure. And it's a pretty fun project. I'm looking forward to seeing this journal grow with different art projects over time. The first thing I did was to grab all kinds of old aged paper from around the house, including envelopes, bits of card, um, old cross stitch patterns that nobody was using, an old dictionary that had fallen apart, whatever you can find that kind of looks old or can be made to look old. This is an old school book with graph paper and I was looking for different textures and patterns because when you do a junker journal, you kind of use scraps of paper and you stick them together and make art out of it. But you can also bind some of it into the book. So I wanted to leave my options open. I coated the paper with coffee stain just made out of instant coffee and then I ironed it and it came out with a pretty interesting texture. I also tried crumpling and ironing uh, some of it as well, just to give it a crinkly look. You can also use old music sheets. I had some on hand. You can print some off from imslp.com and stain it and iron it and give it different textures as well or even have little scraps of paper that you could add to the junk pages. Even little scraps of pictures from a newspaper or magazine could make a very interesting collage in the junk journal. Sorting through all the different colors and textures of paper and card, and envelopes, all that that I had, I put aside some to be used, more like collage type papers to be stuck inside the book, and others I arranged them in what you call signatures. They're basically booklets of about maybe 6 to 8 to 10 folded pages and you fold them together and you compile a bunch of signatures to make your overall book and you sew them together. That is the book binding aspect of it. I took a lot of different types of paper and I wanted to randomize them throughout the book as much as possible. So you know you have kind of a brown paper page, a paper bag page, an old cross stitch pattern, music note page and I just wanted to have a variety and randomness. I cut some paper bags to size and folded them as if they were pages of the book as well and added them to the signatures. All in all, each signature had about 10 sheets of paper each and there were 6 signatures in all which made for a book that was about 2 inches thick. Now came the time to bind the book. I basically used a curved needle and polyester knitting yarn, which is what I had, and I used push pins to mark the holes, you know, to make the holes for the stitching. The outer pages of the first and last signatures were this reinforced old music paper and it's pretty thick so that's going to be the cover of the book that I'm just going to bind together with all the signatures as if it's a regular page. Now the book binding process was actually really challenging because I had some very small pages and it was very hard to align them to the correct binding holes and it was very hard to align the pages together and honestly I still don't know what I was doing but I basically used Coptic stitch and sew the book as if it were just the signatures without any covers. There's a very specific way to bind um, a Coptic stitch book without hard covers included in the binding. I won't be doing a tutorial for the book binding at the moment, 
But if you would like to start book binding, I recommend binding a normal book with normal sized, evenly sized pages as your first project and not attempting a junk journal with many different page sizes. I ended up switching from using two pieces of yarn and trying to twist them together, which is very complicated. I switched to just one piece of black yarn and I also made so many mistakes along the way. I had to stop and start again and stop and start again and fix things and undo things and pull things out. I even tore some pages and had to fix them with masking tape. So all in all, um, challenging, but I'll figure this out and perhaps I'll do a video one of these days on how to bind a variated sized junk journal, you know, pile of signatures together with Coptic stitch. As I said, the first and last signatures had thicker paper on the outside, which means the very first page and the very last page of the junk journal is pretty strong paper. Those extra thick cover pages were also extra wide, so I could fold it back just a little bit and it was strong enough for me to punch some holes, add some metal eyelets, um, two in the front, two in the back, right in the center, and make those holes so that I can insert ribbons to tie the book together, which I think gives it a cute vintage look. Now the two eyelets are inserted, I can get my ribbon ready. I chose to recycle a piece of red ribbon and cut it to a nice length with which you know I can make little knots and bow ties with them to close the book and cut it and I also used a little bit of flame to singe the ends be careful don't burn the book while doing it I singed the ends so that they wouldn't fray all in all this was a really fun project I'm really pleased with the result because it has that kind of very random textured feel to it at all kinds of different pages that's going to be really fun to fill so in the next video i'm going to be doing some painting projects and filling up different pages of the book thanks for watching and bye